They got a funny story for you. Growing up, mom and dad would always watch these these shows, and sometimes uh, they scared me to death. You know, when I was little, they'd watch these shows, and sometimes mom would come up to visit. And we'd live in Richmond, and dad would let us to he stay and watch it. So he said, "Well, you just boys stay up with me." We'd watch some scary shows, you know, and and uh, about aliens and stuff. Well, I was little. That that terrified me. That scared me to death, you know. I was a senior in high school. <laughs> no, I wasn't. That was a joke. But <laughs> I'm just making sure you're paying attention, okay? But <laughs> we'd watch those things, and what I thought was, my brother would say, did you believe that? I wouldn't say, yes, I believe it. And I wouldn't say, no, I wouldn't believe it. I was afraid that if I said, yes, I believe it, that they'd visit me. Uh-huh. I'm not lying, okay? And I was afraid to say, if I said, no, I don't believe it, that they'd visit me because to prove it. I've been there. I've you know what I'm talking, about. Exactly what talking about? You, you might not have been in the same shape with the aliens or whatever it was. It might have been a ghost show or something. I wouldn't acknowledge one way or the other because I didn't want to know. That's right. That's the way the world looks at it today. They want to acknowledge Christ because they don't want to have to deal with it. They don't want nothing to do with it. They want to acknowledge because they know that if they say that they believe Christ, that they'll have an understanding and know that if there is a Christ, there is also a hell. And if there is a hell, then there is a devil. And, and that they're serving one or the other. They'd rather leave the middle ground and put on the tunnel vision and look in their own way and do what they want to do and not have to worry about it. Amen. That's the way they look at it. That's right. Many do. But I'm glad today that 20 years ago that the Lord took those blinders off me. Mm-hmm. Took the blinders off me, Brother Bo, and allowed me to understand. Gave me an understanding just as tonight I believe that He allows everyone to understand. You will not accidentally go to hell and look up and say, Lord, I didn't know. I never had an opportunity. I didn't hear my God, the gospel of my salvation preached to me. I didn't understand it, but everyone will understand. Everyone will hear the gospel. It'll go out into all the world. And when I say all the world, I believe every heart that is inside this world will be pierced by the Spirit of God and they will hear the gospel of their salvation, which is through and by Jesus Christ our Lord. They will hear it. And when that goes out, just as it is tonight, they'll have a choice to make. That's right. And they'll say, yes, Lord. Or they'll say, no, not today. Not you. Not today. Not today. But I believe just like you said, Brother Darrell, we gave a choice. Is it by coincidence that that the Lord allowed us to come exactly the number that we had? Is it by chance? No. No. People say, well, you just don't know my situation. You're right, I don't. One thing that I do know is I know Jesus. And I know what he says. To repent and be born again. You say, well, you don't know my understanding. You say, I've done this or I've done that. I've, done, I've been too bad. I've had people tell me that. That I've been too bad. They say, well, the Lord is never going to save me. I've done all these things. Uh, you know, I've, I've been too bad that nobody, uh, uh, nobody will love me. The Lord won't even love me. He'll never save me. Uh, and they may say, well, uh, you know, some of them, they're, they're kind of moral, uh, uh, good moral people, and they'll think, well, I've not done anything wrong. Uh, so they, in their own heart and mind, feel uh, that they don't need a Savior because they've never done nothing wrong. Uh, and then you got the ones that say, well, I've done so much wrong that the Lord is not going to hear me. Uh, well, this is the way I look at it. Huh? Uh, uh, if God has blessed you tonight to come out to the house of the Lord, uh, uh, some people say, well, I pushed him away too much. Uh, that I don't think he'll ever come back to me. He can do that. Uh, he can do that. If you harden your heart, uh, what can he do? Uh, he, he'll, uh, he'll turn you away. But I believe that if he has turned your away, you won't have a desire to go to church, will you? I believe if he's turned your way not to hear, not to hear, 
that you won't have a desire to go out to the house of the Lord. You won't have a desire to pray. But I believe if God has blessed somebody to come out to the house of the Lord, it's for a reason. To hear something. But men and women think that I've done too much. I sit in my seat while I go and so much stuff comes to my mind and we may be singing a song pretty quick. That I've done too much or I've not done this or not done that or maybe I've done so much that the Lord's not going to hear me. But I got to thinking today of the love that Jesus had and the things that He can do that in our mind we like to judge people. That in our mind as the world looks at it well this person's a murderer. This person's a rapist. This person's done this or done that. That there's no hope for them. That, that, in, that the world looks at them and say, well, uh, they've done all these things. That, they, uh, that They've always going to have that name upon their head. And they're, they're always going to be labeled that way. Uh, but I've got news for you today that it don't matter what you've done. Uh, it don't matter where you've been. Uh, it don't matter how far out of the sea that you went. Uh, uh, that a man named Jesus, uh, uh, what did he do for the devil? Uh, he, he hung uh, up on a cross That's on right. Calvary's hill. Uh, uh, that a man named Jesus... Uh, out of love, he died for the bowl. Out of love, they let him. He let he let them take a spear and pierce it in his side. Out of love, he allowed them to take a crown of thorns and to place it upon his head and let the blood just trickle down his face. Out of love, he allowed he allowed them to take and to smote him upon the face. They even pluck some of the beard out. Out of love, he let them mock him. Out of love, he. Let them uh, uh, spit upon him. Uh, uh, why? Uh, they could have called at any time for legions of angels uh, uh, to come and to get him. Uh, and the Lord could have looked down uh, and said, That's my son you're doing that to. Uh, and they could have went straight down and got him uh, and destroyed the world. Uh, uh, you haven't blessed God today. Uh, it's because of what he did. Uh, uh, that not only he endured all that, uh, uh, that we could have the freedom we got tonight uh, uh, to come out to the Rockport Church uh, and to lay aside all things that be set us in the world uh, and to get in tune with Jesus Christ uh, and feel good today uh, out of love that he came uh, uh, that somebody can tonight uh, uh, can even come to the Rockford Church uh, and hear about this man named Jesus uh, and fall down upon their knees with their heart uh, and cry out Lord forgive me uh, and they can find salvation today uh, uh, because Jesus Christ uh, and what he did on Calvary's Hill uh, uh, that he led him, uh, uh, to kill him there uh, and laid him in a tomb of the narrow uh, and on that third and important morning uh, uh, got up uh, uh, today is alive and alive forevermore. Amen. 